Welcome to Mishnah Study Masakat Masrot Perakeh Mishnah. Oh, here we're going to discuss Syria. Right? So, for all the Syrian Jews out there, if you owned a field in Syria, or better yet, you want to purchase a field in Syria. So, what are the laws of Masrot that apply? So, if you remember, Syria has this quasi status. It's not considered Israel, but at the same time, it's not considered like the rest of Quds Haaretz. If you remember why, we mentioned because David HaMelech, when he went to conquer all of Eretz Israel proper, right? Before he finished conquering all of Eretz Israel, he conquered Syria and he annexed it, um, but he should have done so only after he conquered all of Israel. And therefore, Syria has this in-between status. Now, what's this in-between status? If you buy land in Syria, then it's going to be obligated in Masot. If you buy fruits in Syria, right, then it's not going to be obligated in Masot. We're going to discuss these fruits. doesn't matter if they're on the tree when you're purchasing it or if you're buying it in the shuk, right, when they're detached already from the tree. That's going to be a lot of the discussion in this Mishnah. So the Kach Sadei Arak Bistudi, if a person purchases a vegetable field, in Syria, comes to Nakaman says, if it didn't reach the Maasrot season, right, we're not obligated in Maasrot yet, and you bought this field, right, so you're buying the, 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 the vegetables while they're, while they're attached to the ground, then you're Hayav. If they really reached the uh, Maasr season, the tithing season, okay, so they reached the tithing season not in your possession, Right? So then you are going to be patur. You're patur from the ma'asrot because they were already reached the season before uh, they came into your possession. And he can go ahead and pick it by himself and, you know, proceed. Right? He can't hire a worker, but he can go and pick it by himself. It comes to the Buda and he argues on the Tanakhama and he says, no, you even allowed to hire employees to go ahead and pick the vegetables for you. Amar Abad Shimon Ben Gamliel. Comes a bunch of ben Gamliel and says, "Bamed devarim amurim." Right? What are we talking about when you're allowed to go when when you're going to be hayav in masrot? Bizman shekana karka. Now, when you bought the vegetable field, right? Now, when you bought, bought the vegetables that were attached to the ground in the field, rather when you bought the actual land itself. If you bought land, that's when you're going to be obligated. Avav bizman shelo kana karka. But let's say he didn't buy the land itself. He only bought the vegetables that were attached to the ground. So you bought all these, you know, uh, these, these watermelons that are attached to the ground still, the squash that are attached to the ground, cucumber, whatever it may be, right? You didn't buy the actual real estate. You just bought the, you know, vegetables that are still growing, right? But if you didn't, I was mentioning Right? Even if they didn't reach this tithing season, you're going to be patur. Right? Interesting. That's uh, a bunch of monkey bring on his opinion. Halacha is, by the way, like him. We'll see how Bam says this at the end. Comes in B, Rabbi Uda Hanasi, right? Who's really the, the, the editor of all the Mishnah. And it's interesting, he has his opinion at the end. Rabbi Omer, the Fi Hashbon, Rabbi also argues, he argues on Tanakhama also. And he says what? That when we said that your Hayav, right? Your Hayav for, for Ma'asrot, even if you didn't buy the land itself, it depends. It depends on the percentage, on the proportion. Right, so imagine right, he's arguing on Mishnah. So how so? If you bought a field, a field of, of uh, vegetables before it reached the tithing season, okay, so technically you should be, you know, high up. Now, what do you buy? You bought the vegetables of the field, right, when they're attached to the ground for fifty dollars, and the the land itself, you know, is worth a hundred dollars, right? That's how much it's worth. And now they reach the tithing season in your possession. So you're going to be obligated to give a third of the masrot, right? Because if you would have bought the vegetables plus the real estate, plus the actual field itself, right? That would have been 150, right? So anything that would have grown over there would have been in your possession. So if the whole field would have been worth 150, the land and the fruits themselves, right? You only bought 50 of it, so you bought a third of it. So therefore, you would have to give, you would have, to give a third masrot. And halakha is like Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel, like we said, that the difference is you're only going to be hayab when you buy the land itself, right? But if you didn't buy the land, you only bought the, uh, the vegetables, even if they're attached to the ground, you're going to be patu.